I had been a simp for my girlfriend, Sarah, for 10 years, when I took her to see my parents one last time after their accident. She left, her reason, the senior, Mario, had broken his leg and needed her care. I watched her walk away nonchalantly and smiled bitterly. This time, I won't wait for you anymore. Chapter 1 I got the call from the hospital while I was having dinner with Sarah at a restaurant. The cold voice informed me to come see my parents for the last time. They had been in an accident on their way to the restaurant, and now they were holding on with their last breaths, waiting for me. After hanging up, my hands trembled as I grabbed Sarah's hand, but she impatiently pushed it away. Why aren't your parents here yet? Didn't you say everything was arranged? Let me be clear. I'm not willing to marry into your family to work like a slave. Show me some respect. Okay. Sarah. My parents, they were in a car accident. They're barely hanging on. Let's go. We need to get to the hospital. As I spoke, I grabbed her and headed for the exit. It was a hot summer day. The air so stifling I could barely breathe. Suddenly, she yanked her hand from mine, answering her phone, her sweet voice like nails on a chalkboard. Okay, senior, be careful. I'll be right there. Senior, it was him again. My thoughts were a mess as I fumbled for my car keys. But Sarah took them. Robert. Mario broke his leg. And there's no one to take care of him. Lend me the car for a bit. It felt like the cruelest joke. Tears welled up in my eyes. And I couldn't stop them from falling. Sarah. My parents are on their deathbeds. And you're telling me you need the car to go see your senior. Her face turned pale for a moment. Then she stomped her foot and turned away. The hospital loves to exaggerate things. But I've already seen Mario's leg in the picture. Can you stop being so jealous? I didn't want to argue with her anymore. I snatched the keys and got into the car. If Sarah didn't come with me today, then from now on, we'd have nothing to do with each other. Ten years of being her simp was enough. Seeing my determination, she gave a sneer before turning around and walking away with swagger. I didn't have time to think. I sped to the hospital. Chapter 2. I rushed to the front desk, asked for my parents' names, and quickly found the room. With trembling hands, I stood before the door, praying to the heavens that nothing had happened to them. Suddenly. The door opened, and a body covered in white cloth was wheeled out. In that moment, I felt the sky collapse, but then I heard someone inside calling my name. I walked in. My parents were lying in their beds, arms and legs in casts, but they didn't look like they were in critical condition. The weight lifted from my chest, and I rushed over. My mom wiped the tears from my face, telling me not to worry. I held their hands, filled with gratitude. There's nothing more important than family being safe. My mom, still weak, asked me where Sarah was. She said they wanted to apologize to her for being late. I clenched my fists and forced a smile. It's fine, mom. She's not upset. I had wanted to tell them that Sarah and I were over, but I didn't want them feeling guilty. I'd tell them later. After settling everything, I left the room to get food for them. Then my phone buzzed, a message from Sarah with pictures attached. One showed Mario's leg wrapped in bandages, and the other was a selfie of her looking flawless. Her message read, Robert, your attitude today was awful. I like that new bag from Chanel. I laughed mockingly. Everyone knew that Robert, the eldest son of the Sioux family, had loved Sarah for 10 years. Ever since she transferred to our elementary school, I had followed her everywhere, doing whatever she asked. After we got together, I dared not neglect her. Every time a new designer bag came out, I'd buy it for her without her even asking. But now, thinking back, it felt more disgusting than swallowing filth. She hadn't asked once about my parents' condition. In fact, I'd planned to propose to her after our dinner tonight. Chapter 3 with my head down, I walked forward, not expecting to bump into someone. I looked up to see a female doctor, though she wore a white coat. It didn't hide her impressive figure. Her almond-shaped eyes sparkled as she looked at me. Then, with an apologetic smile, she gently pulled at the sleeve of a nearby nurse. Sorry, Mr. Sue, I'm new here. When I saw the ambulance arrive, I panicked and gave a false alarm. It wasn't intentional. Her voice sounded familiar. As soon as she finished speaking, I recognized her as the young lady who had called me earlier. She introduced herself as Sophia, my parents' primary doctor. There's no need to worry. Your parents just have some scrapes and fractures. Nothing too serious. I nodded, preparing to leave, but noticed the nurse beside her still trembling with fear. I paused and tried to lighten the mood. No need to be so scared. Just don't make that mistake again. Seeing them visibly relax, I didn't linger. But the next moment, I felt someone grab my arm, a soft sensation pressing against it. Sophia smiled warmly. Robert. Aren't you going to add your primary doctor on WeChat? For some reason, she felt familiar, though I couldn't figure out why. I nodded and quickly added her on WeChat. Just as I finished, Sarah's call came through. I declined the call, but she wouldn't stop. I wasn't going to indulge her, so I blocked her. That's when my buddy sent me a photo from the school forum. The picture showed Mario with Sarah. Half of her body was draped over him, both looking flushed, not quite normal. 
Most of the comments underneath were mocking me. After all, it was laughable that Robert, the heir to a leading company, had been a simp for so many years and ended up with nothing. I opened my social media, deleted all photos and posts about Sarah, and made an official announcement. I'm single. Please don't bother me. After posting, I turned off my phone, grabbed the takeout I had ordered, and brought it upstairs. Once everything was settled, my parents fell asleep, and I finally had a moment to breathe. Today was supposed to be the happiest day. I was going to introduce Sarah to my parents, share a lovely meal together. Then, we'd go for a walk, strengthen our bond, and I'd propose to Sarah in front of them. But none of that was going to happen now. From today onward, both the name Sarah and the person herself would disappear completely from my life. In the quiet of the hospital room, my phone rang at the worst possible moment. The caller ID was an unknown number. Afraid of waking my parents, I quickly answered and stepped outside. The familiar voice on the other end was Sarah's, shouting, Robert, what do you mean by that? Why did you say that on social media? Do you have any idea how many people are laughing at me right now? I didn't say a word, and she kept rambling on. Basically, she was saying that if I apologized, bought her the latest designer bag, and publicly announced our relationship again, she would graciously forgive me. I was about to light a cigarette when I remembered I was in a hospital. After she finally finished, I chuckled. Sarah, you haven't asked me once how my parents are doing. There was a brief silence before she raised her voice again. Well, how are uncle and auntie? You're so calm, so they must be fine. I told you the hospital always exaggerates. I didn't want to explain anything more. Not far away. Sophia was walking towards me with a medical chart. Suddenly, a vengeful thought crossed my mind. Without hesitation, I said into the phone, I have a new girlfriend now. Don't call me again. I quickly muted the phone and asked Sophia to pretend to be my girlfriend. She looked a bit startled but nodded quickly. When I turned the sound back on, I could hear Sarah's mocking tone, saying there was no way I could fall for someone else. Hello, I'm Robert's girlfriend. I hope you'll stop calling him from now on. Sophia's voice was soft yet firm, and for some reason, it calmed my restless heart. After that, Sarah abruptly hung up. I looked at Sophia, still processing everything, until she waved her hand in front of me, snapping me back to reality. Hello, my boyfriend. Her voice was sweet, her smile radiant. Sorry, I got caught up in the moment and used you as a cover. She slowly moved closer, and I caught a faint whiff of her perfume. Sophia's face was so close that I could see the fine hairs on her skin. My breathing slowed, and just as I was about to step back, she suddenly retreated herself. It's okay, there's plenty of time for the future. With that, she was called away by the nurse in a hurry. Chapter 4 For several days, I didn't go to school, staying by my parents' side to take care of them. On the school forum, they even started a betting pool, wagering on when I, Robert, would grovel and beg Sarah to take me back. I saw that Sarah bet on seven days. Others followed her lead and bet on seven days as well. I chuckled. On what grounds did these people think I would continue to be Sarah's simp? Without any hesitation, I added an option, never. I, Robert, will never have anything to do with Sarah again. Just then, another unknown number called. I immediately hung up. These past few days, every unknown call had been Sarah, trying different ways to contact me, counting the days. Today happened to be the seventh day. Sophia, holding the medical report, came as usual to check on my parents, and they couldn't stop smiling at her, suppressing my emotions. I watched as she gently tended to them. On the third day of my parents' hospital stay, I told them about the amicable breakup. Although it was sudden, they were business people after all. After a brief moment of surprise, they accepted the truth. After finishing the checkup, Sophia was about to leave when the hospital room door was suddenly pushed open. Sarah rushed in with bags in hand. Smiling brightly as she ran toward me, after putting down her things, she intimately grabbed my arm and introduced herself to my parents. Hello, uncle, auntie, I'm Sarah, I'm so glad you're both alright. The room fell silent. I quickly pulled my hand away and stepped back. Sarah's face changed instantly, but she didn't push further. Sophia just quietly observed everything. Yes, my friend, I clarified, drawing the boundary while thanking Sarah for the gifts. My parents politely invited her to sit and Sophia stood to the side, no longer planning to leave. Auntie, Robert and I had wanted to come see you sooner, but I had something come up that day, so I couldn't come with him. Robert also said that since we'll be family in the future, you wouldn't mind. She kept talking, completely oblivious to the growing displeasure on my parents' faces. Strangely enough, in the past, I would have helped her cover any lie she told. Now, I found her words unbearably revolting. As Sarah spoke, she leaned closer to my mom, almost knocking over the four tube. Thankfully. Sophia swiftly intervened. Please don't be too loud in the hospital, she said coldly, her voice carrying the authority of a doctor. I sighed in relief. 
ready to take Sarah outside to set things straight, but she suddenly stood up, pointing at Sophia in a fit of rage. Are you the one who made that phone call the other day? Sophia didn't deny it, smiling faintly and nodding. The next second, Sarah lost control, charging at her as if to attack. I immediately placed myself in front of Sophia, grabbing Sarah's raised hand and pushing it away. Sarah, stop acting crazy, and for the record, we've already broken up. I spoke firmly, never before so certain that the person before me was unworthy. Robert, you'll regret this. Sarah's eyes were red, tears almost falling. With those harsh words, she turned and stormed out. The previously warm and cheerful atmosphere in the room was shattered. I walked out in silence. Two days later, my parents were finally discharged. I hired a caregiver to look after them, and only after feeling at ease did I return to school. Chapter 5 The school forum was as lively as ever. Passing by the basketball court, I saw Mario, and I have to admit, he's quite good-looking, clean and fresh-faced. He could play basketball and had a way with words. Just as I was about to head back to the teaching building, a group of people suddenly started whispering. Coincidentally, the subject of their discussion was me. I looked up to see where the commotion was coming from, only to find Sarah in a revealing cheerleader outfit, wildly cheering for Mario. I suddenly remembered how she used to scoff whenever I asked her to attend my piano competitions. And now, here she was, dressed like that, shouting encouragement at the top of her lungs. TSK, really not worth it. I lowered my head, pretending to look at my phone, and quickened my pace, but a pair of straight legs appeared in front of me, and without looking, I knew it was Sarah. Robert, how long are you going to keep this up? Keep this up? I almost wanted to laugh. Move. I frowned, my patience about to snap. A crowd had already gathered around us, many of them raising their phones to take pictures. I just wanted to leave. Sarah loved being the center of attention, but I didn't. If you're really that angry, I'll apologize. That day was an emergency. You have no idea how fragile Mario was when I arrived. Fragile. Mario was fragile. And that somehow meant my parents' situation didn't compare to a random upperclassman's. I sneered, looking down at her. Sarah, I don't want to be harsh, but you should be able to tell by now that I don't like you anymore. And don't compare just anyone to my parents. You really should think about whether they even deserve it. I spoke loudly enough for the people around us to gasp. Sarah's face turned pale, her hand trembling as it gripped my wrist. I frowned, glancing disdainfully at the outfit she was wearing, then looked away. I didn't wear this on purpose. Mario said no one was cheering for him, and I didn't want him to lose face. Don't misunderstand me, Robert. Her voice was filled with anxiety, but her words were full of holes. Did she still think I was the fool I used to be? Mario put down the basketball and walked over. I just quietly watched him. He had always found various excuses to ask for Sarah's help, but anyone with eyes could see how deliberate it all was. If you have something to say, say it. Why bully a girl? Mario stepped forward, acting like he was standing up for justice, which almost made me laugh. A perfect match. These two really are a perfect match. My phone rang at an inconvenient moment. When I checked, it was my advisor calling. I was ready to leave, but the crowd had already closed in. Sarah was still crying her heart out, looking like a victim. I was at my wit's end, ready to just push through the crowd and run. Then, a familiar voice came over the loudspeaker. A famous international star is filming at the east gate of the school right now. In an instant, most of the onlookers rushed away. Sarah collapsed in tears on Mario's shoulder. I turned my head away, no longer watching. Chapter 6 My advisor wanted me to organize the badminton competition. As the president of the badminton club, I naturally had to take responsibility. My parents had just been discharged from the hospital, and I was running between home and school, overwhelmed with exhaustion. I had a stack of sign-up sheets on my desk when Sophia appeared in front of me. I thought I was seeing things. Sign me up, she said in her usual soft voice, smiling as always, seeing my confusion about her presence. She explained that she had been accepted into the school's exchange program and was here to bring me the results of my parents' follow-up checkup. I nodded and added her name to the list. I want to sign up too. Out of nowhere, Sarah appeared grabbing the sign-up sheet and filling out her name. After she finished, she glared at Sophia with hostility. I knew her possessiveness was kicking in. In the past, I had rejected all relationships with other girls for her, always keeping a cold distance from others, but she had always had people around her. I never minded before, thinking that no matter what, I would always be her number one, her number one, and the most important person in her life. I had stayed with her for ten years, giving her everything I could, but in the end, it was also laughable, to her. My parents' lives were worth less than Mario's leg. At that thought, the last trace of pity I had for her vanished. There's no chance. Sarah, there will never be a chance again. Sarah held a bottle of water in her hand. And after signing up, she handed it to me, trying to please. I stared at it in silence, 
not responding. Her phone, which was lying on the table, lit up. I glanced at it casually. It was a message from Mario. Sarah, are you here yet? The movie is about to start. I lowered my eyes, hiding all my emotions. Sarah hurriedly picked up her phone, making sure I hadn't seen it, then spoke again. Robert, the advisor needs to talk to me. I'll find you tomorrow. She had used that same lame excuse countless times before. I looked up, staring at her quietly. Sarah, no one likes love that can't see the light of day. Chapter 7 After Sarah left, Sophia sat down beside me. Today, the admissions officer had taken the day off, so I was here to help out. But badminton wasn't exactly a popular sport, so in a way, Sophia signing up was already helping. The atmosphere grew quiet, and I didn't know what to say. Aren't you going to thank me? She asked. I turned my head as she continued. I just saved you from that boiling pot earlier. In an instant, I remembered that familiar voice on the loudspeaker, it had been Sophia. I smiled and nodded. I should really thank you for that. Just as I was about to make a polite remark, she quickly replied. How about taking a walk by the river with me this weekend? I haven't been back in a long time, and I want to see if it's still the same as it was. The river? I felt a bit dazed, that was where I fell in love with Sarah. I was young back then, but already a bit mischievous. I loved skipping stones by the river. The first time I saw Sarah was by the river. She wore a tattered dress, and her face was dirty. She told me her family always fought, and she often didn't have enough to eat. So that day, I took all the pocket money I had saved, bought her a beautiful dress, and took her to a fancy restaurant. She ate voraciously, then squinted her eyes and said, Thank you, you're so kind. I guess that's when I decided I wanted to take care of her for the rest of my life. Years later, when I wanted to take her back to the river, she always scoffed, What's there to see? It's just a river, nothing more. Sophia waved her hand in front of my face, pulling me back from my memories. So, are you coming or not? She asked again. This time, I nodded. Chapter 8 The badminton competition was scheduled for Friday, and quite a few people showed up. It seemed the publicity team had really put in some effort. The tournament was single elimination, so the beginners were quickly knocked out. I had originally thought Sophia was a novice, but to my surprise, her skills were impressive. She wore her hair in a high ponytail, revealing her elegant collarbones. Every movement she made had a goddess-like grace. The younger students had already started cheering her on. Soon. Only Sarah and Sophia were left in the women's bracket. I didn't know how long Sophia had been practicing, but I knew exactly how long Sarah had trained, because I had taught her myself. The day she asked me to teach her badminton, I asked why. She stammered something about just being interested. I didn't think too much of it, so I arranged a time and taught her with all my heart. Three days later, I saw her playing on the court with Mario, exchanging rally after rally, and that's when I realized why she wanted to learn. I was angry back then. But Sarah just frowned and accused me of making a big deal out of nothing. It's just badminton with him. Why do you have to be so unreasonable? Can't you stop being so paranoid? It really bothers me. If I were involved with him, it would have happened by now, don't you think? The rest of my words were swallowed back down. Sarah turned her head toward the crowd. And when she realized the cheering wasn't for her, she frowned. I knew she was angry because she had always wanted to be the center of attention. I worried a bit for Sophia because a furious Sarah could be hard to deal with. But as it turned out, my worries were unnecessary, Sophia's skills were clearly far more advanced than Sarah's. Perhaps others couldn't see it, thinking they were evenly matched, but I had been trained in all sorts of skills from a young age, and Sophia's every move mirrored the professional training I had received. Sure enough, it wasn't long before Sarah started to tire. Suddenly, she stumbled and fell to the ground, clutching her leg and shouting in pain. The crowd began to stir, and Sophia quickly rushed to check on her. I followed the crowd over to where Sophia was handling the situation. She looked at Sarah's injured leg, treated it briefly, then breathed a sigh of relief. It's just a minor sprain, nothing serious. Sarah suddenly shoved Sophia away, her face filled with anger. Don't touch me. Mario immediately swooped in, picking Sarah up and shouting at Sophia. You're not a professional, so why are you pretending to be? If something goes wrong, are you going to take responsibility? His tone was full of disdain, and Sarah had pushed Sophia hard enough to make her stumble. I couldn't hold back my anger anymore. I helped Sophia up, then glared coldly at Mario and Sarah. Injuries during a match aren't unusual. Sophia is a doctor. If you don't believe her, you're free to go see someone else. And Sarah, don't let me see you lay a hand on Sophia again. From the moment I entered this school, I had never said a harsh word to anyone. Maybe that's why people had felt free to turn my private life into entertainment. But perhaps they had forgotten, I was never an ordinary person. If I wanted someone to pay the price, it would be easy. Sure enough. Mario's face changed instantly, and he couldn't say a word for a long time. He simply carried Sarah to the infirmary, in Mario's arms, 
Sarah seemed to be over her pain, whining that she wanted to walk and demanding that I carry her instead. I didn't bother responding. I just brushed the dust off Sophia's back. Are you okay? How are you feeling? After all, the incident had happened during the competition I had organized. Sophia had kindly helped, only to be met with ungratefulness. It needed to be handled properly. Sophia shook her head, indicating that she was fine, and then habitually tucked her hair behind her ear. A faint birthmark behind her ear caught my attention. I felt like I had seen it somewhere before, but I couldn't quite place it. My phone buzzed with a message from Mario, saying Sarah was throwing a tantrum, refusing to take her medicine unless I came to see her. I frowned, thought for a moment, and replied swiftly, then let her suffer. Chapter 9 This time, because of the issue during the competition, the mixed doubles matches were pushed back. Sophia came to me, saying she had no partner. So naturally, I agreed to help her as a way of thanking her. To practice our coordination, we rented a court and practiced relentlessly. But for some reason, every time I got close to her, I felt a strange sense of familiarity. It was a feeling I couldn't quite describe. When we had practiced enough, we sat down side by side to rest. Her hair was damp with sweat, clinging to her skin. Once again, the birthmark behind her ear caught my attention. I found myself staring, lost in thought, until our faces grew uncomfortably close, snapping me back to reality. Sophia seemed excited and even leaned in pulling her hair back to show me clearly. Look closely, Robert. Really look at this mark behind my ear. I looked at her in confusion. Her eyes sparkled with excitement. A bit too much, but I couldn't resist the lure of familiarity, so I examined it carefully. Even so, nothing came to mind. Well, what do you think? Does it remind you of anything? I frowned and shook my head. It looks familiar, but I can't say more than that. Her brightness dimmed instantly. When we parted, Sophia still seemed off, but I didn't think too much of it. Once Sarah recovered, the competition was rescheduled. This time, Sarah paired up with Mario. The final match drew a much larger crowd than before. After all, our tangled four-way relationship had become prime gossip material. The match began, and it quickly became clear how much our professional training gave me and Sophia an advantage. Playing against Sarah and Mario was laughably easy for us. The outcome was predictable. We won. As I was walking out with Sophia, Sarah blocked our path. Her expression was one of reluctance. But finally, she seemed to muster the courage to speak. Robert, I'm willing to listen to whatever you say from now on. I'm confessing to you again, right here and now. Will you be with me? The crowd started cheering again, most of them expecting me to follow Sarah's lead. As always, are you done? If so, I'm taking Sophia out to dinner. Have some self-respect. Sarah's face visibly shifted from disappointment to anger. In a final gesture, she grabbed Mario's hand and dramatically walked away with him. I just shook my head, feeling more indifferent than ever. With the tournament over, I could finally take a break. A lot had happened recently, as if everything had changed in an instant, and many things had been let go. My parents were busy with the company, and I enjoyed the peace and quiet. Aside from the occasional texts from Sarah, who kept changing her number to message me, lately, things had escalated, somehow. She had convinced Mario to plead on her behalf. Even Mario began asking me to give her another chance. Finally, fed up, I agreed to meet Mario to have a serious talk but I made it clear that if I saw Sarah, I would leave immediately. Mario chose a private room at a quiet restaurant. The place wasn't cheap, but I vaguely remembered his family wasn't exactly well off. After sitting down, I got straight to the point. What do you want to talk about? Mario poured himself a drink and downed it in one gulp, then gave me a helpless smile. Sarah said she realized she can't live without you. She asked me to come and explain. I smiled back. Explain what? That there's nothing going on between us. It's all just a misunderstanding. He paused then let out a long sigh before continuing. It was all my one-sided feelings. It had nothing to do with her. I frowned, studying him. Despite the sincere look on his face, something felt off. There was a strange vibe I couldn't quite put my finger on. For the last time, I will never be with Sarah again. And if you really like her, you shouldn't let her keep making a fool of herself. It's disgusting. Yes, disgusting. That was how I felt about everything involving Sarah now. Ten years of feelings. And in the end, all I could call it was disgusting. She wasn't worth it, and it was only now that I finally realized it. Mario and I didn't part on good terms. On my way home, Sophia texted me to meet her by the river. When I arrived, it was dusk. Sophia stood by the water, her long hair blowing gently in the wind. Her figure was graceful. I walked over slowly, noticing that she didn't seem in a good mood. Robert, is Sarah the only person you remember? I looked at her, confused. She turned to face me, and that's when I saw her face was streaked with tears. Robert. Do you remember saving a little girl by this river? I stared at her face, feeling a vague sense of familiarity. Just as I was about to speak, she suddenly jumped into the water, 
I gasped and immediately jumped in after her. The icy cold water pierced my skin, and in that instant, I remembered who Sophia was. The birthmark behind her ear was the mark of our childhood promise. When we were kids, I called her Little Ear. Her family lived next door to mine, and I used to take her out to play all the time. One day, while skipping stones, she slipped and fell into the river. I jumped in to save her. The first thing she did when she woke up was slap me. Then she hugged me and cried. I was bewildered, but I patted her back to comfort her. Later, her family was going abroad, and before leaving, she came to me with her childish voice, asking me to look behind her ear. She said she had a beautiful flower behind her ear and that I should use it to recognize her when we met again. Childhood me had nodded earnestly, promising never to forget her, but the grown-up me had shaken my head, having forgotten her completely. Chapter 10 Although it was summer, when I carried Sophia out of the water, she was still shivering with cold. With a stern expression, I took her home. The whole way back, she kept looking at me expectantly, repeating the same question, did you remember? I was too angry to answer, and only after making sure she was settled did I softly reply, yeah, I remembered. Little ear, Sophia was overjoyed, but after a moment, she started crying again. I gently patted her back, Mario suddenly called, and on the other end, he said that Sarah had cut her wrists, both Sophia and I were shocked. When we rushed to the hospital, we saw Sarah, pale as a sheet. The doctor said it was a good thing she was brought in quickly, or else the situation could have been much worse. Mario stood by, deep in thought. But when he noticed me looking at him, he immediately put on a worried expression. When Sarah woke up, I sat by her side. Robert, I really know I was wrong. Can't you stop this? Her eyes started welling up with tears again, but I felt nothing inside. In the past, my love justified everything because I loved her. I chose to forgive her, but now that I didn't love her anymore, I suddenly realized that the person in front of me wasn't as radiant as I once thought. Everything about her was, in some way, my creation, and she had taken it all for granted. Perhaps I truly loved that little girl from my childhood, but the grown-up Sarah standing in front of me was someone I no longer recognized. Please, just forgive me this once. Okay, I'll listen to you from now on, and we'll be together. Okay. Her tone was pitiful, begging me over and over again. I simply looked at her quietly and, in the end, shook my head. I don't love you anymore. The more you act like this, the more I despise you. That sentence seemed to hurt her deeply. She let go of my hand, looking defeated. Without staying any longer, I got up and left the room. Sophia's hair still wasn't dry. She might catch a cold. That was the only thought running through my mind. When I got home, Sophia sat obediently, waiting for me to dry her hair. It was only then that I snapped back to reality. Something was wrong with me. Damn. Little ear, she's looking more beautiful every day. Chapter 11 after reconnecting with Sophia, our relationship only grew closer. I'm not sure when it started, but we became inseparable. We went to classes together, ate together, and hung out together. The happiness I found with her was something I had never experienced before. And so, naturally, we ended up together. Later, I took her out to sea on a yacht. The night sky was full of dazzling stars, and in that intoxicating moment, I asked her, Will you regret this? Her answer was steady and gentle, No, I'll never regret it, not for my whole life and that was that, a dark night, a strong wind, and, well, everything was fully indulged, after we got back, we met each other's parents, since both of our families were well matched, everything went smoothly, the date of our engagement was fast approaching, and I was getting closer and closer to happiness, I took Sophia to try on wedding dresses and personally chose the restaurant for the reception, everything was going well, until one day, Sarah started pounding on my apartment door, begging me to let her in, it was pouring rain outside, and in the end, I couldn't take it anymore. When I opened the door, I barely recognized the person standing there. Sarah's hair was a mess. Her eyes had dark circles, and she was painfully thin. She looked almost like a ghost. Robert, we're the ones who are supposed to be together. We've been together for 10 years. 10 years. How many more decades can I give to someone else? She was sobbing, gasping for air between her words. Out of human decency, I poured her a glass of water. Then, sitting calmly on the sofa, I said, Sarah. I loved you for 10 years too, but for those 10 years, you never once cherished me. You said you were out shopping with your girlfriends, but in reality, you went to a concert Mario invited you to. You took the money I gave you and used it to go out with him. You told me your family needed money, and without a second thought, I sent it to you, only to find out you gave it all to Mario. On my birthday, I rejected everyone else because I wanted to spend the day with you, but in the end, you left me waiting alone at the restaurant all night. Do I need to go on about where you were and who you were with that night? I looked at her, speaking slowly and clearly. There were plenty of other things I could have said. In many ways, I had never been her first choice, 
but I had been too naive to believe it back then. Sarah didn't say another word, just sat on the floor, crying. Her crying was getting on my nerves. What now? Sophia would be upset when she came back and saw the floor all dirty. Do you need something else? If not, please leave. I still need to make dinner for Sophia. Sarah flinched, and before leaving, she didn't forget to ask me for money. I laughed for a long time, 10 years of our relationship, and all she wanted now was money. But then I thought, paying for peace and quiet seemed worth it. Without much hesitation, I transferred the money over. Chapter 12 The image of Sophia walking toward me in her wedding dress is something I'll remember for the rest of my life. She was breathtakingly beautiful, and I personally slipped the ring onto her finger. Just as the ceremony was about to be completed, Sarah burst in. She looked even more terrifying than before, neither fully human nor ghost, making everyone frown in disgust. Robert, give me money, give me money, or else I won't get any more stuff, and I'll be beaten to death. You need to give me money now. She was completely deranged, lost to madness. Sophia was a little frightened, so I gently embraced her, softly reassuring her. The malice in Sarah's eyes only grew, as if she was ready to kill us in the next second. The engagement party, which had been going so smoothly, was now ruined by this chaotic scene. I'm not the type to let things slide, Sarah would have to pay for this. Suddenly, Mario's face popped into my head at the most inconvenient moment. Sure enough, when all the gathered evidence was laid out in front of me, everything became clear. Sarah had become addicted to drugs, and it was all part of Mario's plan. Four months. Mario had been asking Sarah for money under the guise of some nonsense about spiritual enlightenment, all to control my thoughts. I couldn't comprehend such craziness, but the most absurd part was that Sarah actually believed it at first, until Mario took advantage of the situation and introduced her to substances she should never have touched. From that moment on, all the money in her account flowed directly to Mario. In addition, Mario deceived her with promises of lucrative investments, convincing her that she could make a fortune. Sarah believed him, and that belief led to her complete downfall. I closed my eyes as I looked at the photos in the report. There was no trace of the school beauty she once was. Now, she lay on the floor, covered in bruises, barking like a dog to entertain her employers. That's how she had become Mario's money-making machine. From being a source of wealth to now a slave to his schemes, Mario had been cunning from the start. He deliberately got close to Sarah because he knew I would give her money, and all he had to do was turn that money into his own. And clearly, he succeeded. The door opened, and Sophia entered with a heavy expression. Sarah's body is covered in injuries, almost no part of her is unharmed. I knew how soft-hearted Sophia was. Seeing Sarah in that state must have been hard for her. I walked over and gently embraced her, slowly offering comfort. It's okay, little ear, I'll take care of it. She nodded and sighed. I looked at the documents on the table, already formulating a plan in my mind. Chapter 13 Sarah had run away. If she didn't make money, Mario would beat her. Mario was careful. He made sure not to leave any DNA or fingerprints whenever he hit her. It was as if he knew this would all come to light one day. So he had prepared in advance. Once again, I found myself sitting in a private room with Mario. But this time, he didn't bother pretending anymore. He lounged back in his seat, his tone filled with contempt. What's the matter? So young master, not enjoying your romantic life with your little doctor, why bother calling me out? Don't tell me, have you fallen for Sarah again? His words were laced with sarcasm and I just smiled, shaking my head. Mario, do you really think your plan was flawless? I stared him down, watching the fear flash in his eyes. He was afraid I'd found the evidence to put him away. To be honest, I wasn't sure at first, but persistence pays off. I had found the place where he first assaulted Sarah. Maybe it was his first time, so he wasn't as careful, leaving enough evidence to incriminate him. The small cabin by the river on the west side, ring any bells. His glass slipped from his hand and shattered on the floor his eyes widening as he stared at me. Mario, you should have never forced a helpless woman to earn money for you. You've brought shame to all men. The arrest went smoothly. Faced with irrefutable evidence, Mario confessed everything. At the trial, Sarah was present. She had recovered quite a bit after some treatment, but the scars were still there. Mario admitted that from the moment he met Sarah, his intentions were never pure, it wasn't love, it had always been about money. And the fastest way to get money was through Sarah, because I was generous with her. Sarah had money. Mario figured that, with his looks, seducing Sarah would be easy, and, unfortunately, he was right. Sarah believed him, wholeheartedly, beside me. Sophia quietly squeezed my hand, as Mario spoke. He suddenly turned to look at Sarah. She flinched, not even daring to meet his eyes. Mario continued, Oh, and that day you broke up for good. I faked the cast at the hospital. There was nothing wrong with me, I was just broke. But who would have thought you'd be so pathetic, not even able to hold on to Robert? I forced myself to hold back the urge to punch him, 
This scum didn't deserve to live. Sarah went from disbelief to breakdown, to complete despair. In the end, she just fell silent, silently walking over to me, tears streaming down her face. I looked up, meeting her gaze. Her eyes were filled with sorrow and regret. I'm sorry, Robert. I didn't appreciate you. I had the best love, the best person, but I took it all for granted. I always thought your love for me was something I deserved, that it was just how things were meant to be. Her voice cracked as she sobbed, tears falling in large drops, but I forgot that no one is obligated to treat me that well. I threw you away because of this scum, and now I've lost you. I deserve this, I brought this upon myself. Robert, I regret it. I really, really regret it. Sarah was sobbing uncontrollably, her fragile body collapsing to the ground. I just stood there, watching her in silence. Suddenly, something inside me let go. This was the woman I had loved for ten years, but she didn't appreciate it. I knew I had resented her for that, but seeing her like this, I suddenly felt like it didn't matter anymore. Let it all go. Besides, I already had my little ear by my side. Sophia tightened her grip on my hand, and I, half laughing, squeezed her hand back. Mario was sentenced to death. And in the end, only his father came to see him. The old man, frail with age, approached with a tattered card in hand, speaking in a thick accent. He pleaded with the judge, I've got money. My boy said money can fix things. Did my boy make a mistake? I'll give you money. Just give me my boy back. Okay. His voice cracked, and he kept waving that worn card around. Mario no longer had that fearless look he once had. He just stared at the old man, tears streaming down his face. Dad, please don't do this. I'm the one who let you down. Dad, I closed my eyes, unable to watch any more. Chapter 14 Sophia and I finally got married a year later. Little Ear looked absolutely stunning in her wedding dress. We traveled back and forth frequently, her parents lived abroad, while mine were in the country. Eventually, we agreed to bring her parents back to live with us. After all, no place is better than home. Mario was sentenced to death, and Sarah left the country. But every year on my birthday, I'd still receive a message at midnight, wishing me well. That tradition never stopped. One more thing, little ear is going to be a mom. I've also made sure that Mario's father is being taken care of. After all, the two of them only had each other. With Mario gone, the old man's life would have been impossible otherwise. Little ear has become big ear now, and she's going to give birth to a baby girl. It looks like we'll truly be one big happy family now.